Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Good, good afternoon. Amen. We're gathered together to pause just for a moment to celebrate God's anointed ones going deeper into ministry. Don't they look good over there? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We stand today to celebrate God adding to kingdom warriors just a few good men and women. Praise God. Amen. We are here to witness the licensing of these souls into ministry, officially uh, licensing them into ministry. God had already called them, God had already equipped them, and Pastor Shot already tested them. <laughs> so we're standing here officially to recognize what God has done on behalf of his servants. Amen. This is a good time for Chosen Ministries and United Faith Christian Centers. We're going to move right along while you are resting on your feet. Praise God. I don't mind telling you, I feel something. I feel something stirring. So I'm going to get out of the way because I feel something stirring in here. Praise God. I feel that God is here with purpose this afternoon. I know we came to celebrate, but amen. Real quick, tell your neighbor, God is after something today. Amen. That was the wrong neighbor. Tell your other neighbor. Ask your neighbor, will you receive what God has for you? Oh, that's the real question. Will, well, will you receive it? God always started, it, but will you receive it? Will you receive it? Praise God. Hallelujah. I gotta get out of the way. Awesome. Oh, before we get started. I can't go, I can't go nowhere. Come on, y'all. Somebody, come on, somebody lift it. That Shibo, Shibo open. Come on, somebody stand up. Come on, come on, get out of the mess. Come on, salute the Lord. Glory, 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 hallelujah. 
Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory. together like this with people that have high expectations. It ain't dangerous for us, it's dangerous for the devil. It's dangerous for a group of believers to come together with an expectation. I know we came to celebrate these ministers going forward, but I believe God has assembled us here strategically for a said purpose. I believe the said man, the man of the hour, has a word for the people that's in the house today. I believe it's going to be more than just a minister's license and service. Amen. I just want to have a witness. Anybody still believe in God for miracles, signs, and wonders? What does anybody still believe God for that? Anybody believe this is the place where it can happen? Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to get out of the way. We're going to move forward and we're going to get this man of God up so he can break the bread of life with us. Praise God. And amen. Real quick, tell your neighbor, whatever happens, happens. Amen. That was the wrong neighbor. Tell the one on the other side, say, whatever happens, happens. Amen. Tell one more person, we got to get everybody. Whatever happens, happens. Amen. We got we got to break the mind of just having church. We got to we got to break the mindset of coming by a preconceived notion. So we just come to warn you. Whatever happens, happens. Whatever whatever takes place, whatever transpires, is what the Lord what the Lord wanted to happen. Praise God. Amen. We're going to move. I want to give you 
our order and then we'll see what the Lord says. We're going to have a scripture from Elder Latanya Roan and then we're going to have our opening invocation from Elder Juanita George and then the praise team for Family Outreach yeah. Ministries are going to come and minister glory down. Amen. Amen. If y'all are ready, just receive the Lord a hand clap. Get the glory and the honor 
God, we come to invoke your presence. But you are already here, God. So have your way, y'all. God, let the men of God uh, go to the front and the back, uh, to the left and to the right, God. Uh, that you will be glorified, God. Have your way. Have your way. And we'll be careful to give you the glory. And the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. We come to bless the Lord tonight, amen? We come to bless the Lord tonight, yes. Hallelujah. I know you might be tired a little bit, maybe too much chicken or whatever you had today, but I dare you to get on your feet and get loose for the Lord tonight. I dare you to get loose with Jesus tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Because we serve a mighty good God. We serve a mighty good God. We serve a champion. He's undefeated. He's indisputed. He's the champion of the whole world. Not only that, but he went and defeated death, hell, and the grave. We have the victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Our God is the awesome God. Our God is the awesome God.
Help me. 
Introduction of the speaker by Pastor Geneva Shy. Amen. After she uh, introduces the speaker, that dynamic praise team is going to come back and give us one more selection. And after that, we'll have the word of God. Amen. You guys ready for the word? Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Are we ready for the collection? take care of it. Someone will come down with the basket. So you give, it will be given unto you in good measure. Press down, shake it together and run it over with men given to your bosoms. So as we prepare to give this evening, let us be cheerful givers because God loves a cheerful giver. Not giving begrudgingly or of necessity, but thankful unto the Lord that we have to give back to the Lord because all things came from the Lord and of his own are we giving back to him. If you guys could give us a little something, something that my my deacons and my ushers can march to. Just so you know, we, we have a plan, praise God, that we're going to 
at some point stop paying rent Amen. and have our own. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That, that is what the majority of our collections go for is, is for us to uh, build up enough revenue to where we can buy a building or purchase some land and get something built. Amen. Praise God. We're looking for a whole campus for children ministry. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Y'all celebrate with us and we'll celebrate with you. Amen. Amen. So we're going to keep it moving. We're going to move right along. We're going to have that. Uh, we're going to have my mom, my mama, my mom's. That's my mama, y'all. Many have tried. Don't come. Many have tried to claim her. I got. I got the mic for just a second. I just. I got to get this off my chest. Many have tried to claim her. Oh, they go two right there. That, that's my mom. No, that ain't your mom. That, that's my mom. Amen. That's my mom's. Praise God. That's my baby. Amen. I loan her out to y'all just for a brief moment, just for a season. Amen. But that's my mama. Don't y'all ever forget that. <laughs> okay, let me go. Anyway, my mother is going to come and she's going to introduce. The speaker of the hour, and then the praise team is going to come back. And right after that, we're going to have the word of God from the man of God. Receive my mama with a hand clap of praise. Y'all come on, y'all come on, receive my mama. <laughs> For a minute, you started acting like me. <laughs> Praise God, give an honor to the Spirit of Christ. It is an honor to be. Come on, give an honor to the Spirit of Christ. He deserves it. He deserves it. He's worthy. to 
submit to him. I, I, I sometimes I'm afraid to say what I want because if I say it, he's going to make it happen. If he put himself in a stressful way, he will make it happen. And I am grateful for this man of God. This man loves God with all his heart. He studies the word of God. And this afternoon, you're not receiving from a novice, but you're receiving from a student of the word, a student of the Holy Spirit, who teaches, who leads, and guides. I present to some, I introduce to others, Apostle Earl Shot Singer. After this song from the choir, praise team, choir coming, choir coming, choir coming. But from the praise team, after this song, the next voice you will hear somewhere thereafter will be that of Apostle Earl Shot.
We love you guys more than you will ever know. Amen. Thank you for all of those that came uh, from family outreach, the musicians, the elders. Amen. All of them. Everyone that traveled with us to this auspicious occasion. Amen. So let me just cut it there. And everybody else, I honor all of you in your respective places. Amen. Amen. To all the licensees, all the honorees. Amen. To all of you guys. I hope I got a word for you today. Amen. 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 So you will have to listen very carefully. Amen. Amen. You may have the seats in the presence of the Lord. Did I miss anybody? If I did, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I didn't. Huh? I, I, I didn't miss her. You weren't listening. I didn't miss her. I said to all, all the men and women of God, if you just want me to call her name, Pastor Judy Moore. Amen. It wasn't my intention to miss anyone. Amen. Amen. We're a little, we're a little groaner than that, right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Let's move forward. Amen. I want to speak a word into your ear and especially to the preachers, to the licensees and those that are coming aboard and placing themselves in the hand of God. Amen. I want you to think about what I'm about to say. Amen. We're living in a time everybody is talking about something. The news you get up in the morning is loaded with information. Yeah. And we find ourselves talking about what they're talking about. We find ourselves repeating what we hear. Yeah, we Amen. Amen. And whether it's right, whether it's wrong, whether it's good or bad, we find ourselves repeating what we heard. Yes. We give credence to those things and we, we talk about them as if they were true. Uh -huh. Not knowing the background to what you're hearing and what the spirit uh, of the thing that you're talking about, what it's about, we just say it. And my point is, we all at one time or another repeat everything we hear. We say what we know, we say what we don't know, we say what we think we know, we say what others know and think we know what they know. We say what we hear, whether it's true or not. Or whether we even believe it or not. We still say it. Because that's the conversation of the day. It's part of our daily routine to find somebody to talk about something somebody heard. That's where gossip comes from. But suppose that we took the word of God... And repeated that on a daily. Yeah. Amen. In place of some of this other stuff that we hear. I dare to say that some of the stuff that we are allowed to get into our thinking. 
Watch this. If we were to think about what we're thinking about, we'll find out that it ain't worth thinking about. Take a moment and pause on that. Because everything you think about don't belong to you. Examine your thoughts. I'm just going to talk a little bit and then I'll try to preach. Examine your thoughts, preachers, ministers, deacons, mothers, saints, and friends, missionary, doorkeeper, whatever you are in the kingdom of God. Examine your thoughts. Because your thoughts forms opinions. See, somebody form an opinion of that Apostle Shy right now because I said what I said in the beginning. That's the only way I know how to be. It's real. I feel it. I feel you're forming an opinion because you think I was a little rough. And your opinion prompts what you talk about. It's going to be talked about. And what you talk about forms an image in your mind and that image gives you something else to think about. Follow me now. So it creates a never-ending cycle of thought processes on the, these insignificant things until we never get around to thinking on the things that we should be thinking about. So we got a lot of thought processes going on that does not benefit the things of the kingdom of God. Right. Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, brother, uh -huh. yeah. whatever is true, yeah. whatever is honorable, yeah. uh -huh. whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. Today, I want to emphasize that what we think, we say. If your heart gets full of it, your mouth will speak it. So it prompts us and behooves us not to put so much other mess in our hearts. Because when we do, we are going to speak it. Suppose a man of God right here in this red shirt, supposing you fill your heart with the word of God. Then when you open your mouth, what's coming out is going to be the word of God. And the topic today is say what God said. Because what he says matters. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. What God say and only what God say matters. Yes, right. Amen. When we get up in the morning, what is the first thing we do is say, oh, my lumbago hurts, my back hurts, my head hurts. We start off talking about something negative. <coughs> I'm hungry. I want to eat. And, and we talk about everything. But how about when we get up, we start giving God some praise? You know why we can't do that? Because it's not what our heart is full of. When we fill this heart with praise, when we fill it with worship, when we fill it with thanksgiving, when we fill it with a gratefulness and graciousness yes, to God, when, when we move and when we open our mouth, whether it's in the morning, yes, in the sir. evening, in the afternoon, at night, yes, that's sir. what's going to come out. Yes, my wife go around the house and, 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 and in the car when we're driving, every now and then she'll break out with a praise. I'm like, baby, you all right? She said, yes, I'm just thinking about the goodness of Jesus. Amen. 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 
Yeah. In the house, you can hear him going through the house giving God praise. Yes, because a heart is full of it. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. I'm not gonna be long. That's helping us. We need it but what if we thought about the goodness of God all the time? Even early in the morning and, and when we're taking our break on our job, do we take time to say, thank you, God, for my job. Thank, thank you for, for being in my life. Philippians 4 say, 8 says, all these are the good things. Think on them things. Fill your heart with that. Yes. Put that in your heart. Implant that in your heart. Yes. Say what God say yes. because God's words matter. We're going to work with that right there. I know you don't think I'm going to do nothing. So. <laughs> amen, amen. We're going to work with that. Proverbs 18.21. Proverbs 18, 21 says, and life, somebody say life, life. and death yeah. are in the power yeah. of the tongue. Yeah. And those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. Yeah. Yeah. Speak, Michael. Yeah. Yes, sir. St. John 1, 1 through 4 says, in the beginning, before all time, just in the Amplified, was the Word, Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God Himself. He was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God, the Word. And all things were made and came into existence through him who? The Word. Yes, and without him, him who? The Word. Now even one thing was made that has come into being. Amen, In him who? The was word. life yes. and the power to bestow life and the life was the light of men. Let's back up. Let's back up. Proverbs 18.21 Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So whatever your heart is full of, the tongue will speak. Yes, every time you open your mouth, every time you talk to me, yes, Mr. Raby, you, you either speak in life or death. There's not for two terms. You can either speak life or you can speak death. Amen. Anything that God didn't say that you say is not life. Because everything that God said is life. It brought life. I'm talking about the same word, amen, that created the heavens and the earth. I'm talking about the same word that looked down on a dark, chaotic world and began to speak and call light. I'm talking about the same word that spoke to the Holy Spirit and told it to go hoover over the earth and cause life to materialize. It came, it became matter. So everything God said becomes matter. So everything God says matters. That's why, that's why in Proverbs said you got the matter of death and you got the matter of life in your tongue. Amen. Amen. If you speak what God speaks, if you say what God say, you will bring life, you will cause life into all of those that are walking in darkness. Just like the Holy Spirit did to the earth. Amen. Light was already always there, but it could not manifest. It could not become matter until God spoke to it. He said, let there be light. Let there be the matter of light. Amen. It was so powerful when he called the light out until 
doctors hunting it down and trying to douse it, but could not. Comprehend it, could not. Come against it, could not. Put it out, could not. Make it dark anymore. The word, once the word has been spoken by God, it cannot return void. If the word come out of your mouth, Jeff, then what that word do, if it's God's word, it's going to be homeless until it accomplishes what it went out to do. We got so much homeless word floating around. Because it has not accomplished what it was sent to do. It cannot come back to Papa God if to hand it. If it spoke over your life, Dwayne, it, it ain't coming back until it's finished. I don't care what you go through. I don't care what happens in your life. I don't care what happens to you. I don't care what happens for you, against you, about you. That word is not coming back until it finishes the word. He that has begun a good work in you shall accomplish it in the day of Jesus Christ. Let the word, now speak the word. Don't you worry about what you're doing. Don't worry about what the word is doing. Let the word do the work. Some plant seeds. Some water. But God gives the increase. Because that seed that got to germinate has got to die first. And then it's got to germinate in the ground. There's life in death. Come on, somebody. It's got to die and then life comes. That's what the word does, L.L. When you speak the word over your own life, there's power in self-prophecy. When you prophesy to yourself and say what God's... Now make sure, come on. Make sure you saying what God said about you. Not what you want to happen. But what God preordained to happen. Hallelujah. What he predestined before the foundations of the world to happen. Now if you agree with that and you resound and reciprocate what God said, you can sit back on your bed locks and just wait for the materialization. Wait for it to manifest. Wait for it to illuminate. Come on, somebody. Wait for it to come to light because it's surely coming. When the word is in you and you speak that word, it's going to leave you. Because now you got it on assignment. You put the word on assignment. Just like uh, 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 a senior pastor, Dwayne Shaw, there was a word put out on you when you was in the alleyway drunk and full of drugs. There was an assignment put out on you. Your, your auntie put a word out on you. Your mama put a word out on you. Your father put a word out on you. Your brother and your sister put a word out on you. Amen. And call those things, amen, in your life to begin to manifest. It was a holy call, son. It was so powerful until all the drugs in the world could not keep it from coming to pass. The word did its work and is continually doing its work in you. Amen. When you stood here and prophesied about buying a building and stuff, don't you know that you're sending out the word? You're sending out, it's on assignment. It's going to look for some property. It's going to look for a building. Hey, you put it on assignment. And it ain't coming back to you. I don't care how many times you call it. Until it's got what you sent it to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Say what God said. If God put it in your heart, let me tell you something about desire. Let me deviate just a little bit. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Let me break that down, uh, uh, Lady Sharon.
share it for you? Amen. Because I know you already know. I'm just reminding you of what you already know. Amen. When, the, when, when God gives you the desires of your heart, it's not about what you want. It's about God putting a desire from himself in you. And God cannot desire something that he don't have. He'll give you the desires to desire. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on. Because some of the things that we desire out of ourselves is not wholesome for us. It's not benefit to the kingdom of God. But when God put a, an unction down in your spirit, when God put a desire in your spirit, and you desire, you think you just desiring it, you simply desiring what God desired for you. Let me get back to planet Earth. Because if when it's in there, and you call it out. See, you, you, you can't call the word from somewhere. You can't even call the word out the Bible. No, no, no. You can't call the word out the Bible and say work for me. Because the work is in here. You got to call the word from within you. Because it's already doing some things that you don't even know nothing about. And when the time come for that word to do what it's supposed to do. God will speak to that word and say now is the time for them to speak you into existence. Amen. Say what God say. Because what God say has already happened. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. I wish you could give Ecclesiastes 3.15 for me please. If you can just get that and put that on the board. Because these people in here don't believe I know what I'm talking about. Whatever God says already happened. We're the one just getting catching up with what he already did. Yes, sir. Oh, can you get it up there? There it is. I want you to read it. I'm not just taking it from Pastor Shy. And I want you to read it. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be have already been, and God required that which is past. There is absolutely nothing that you can say uh, 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 about your life and that you want God to do for you in your life that God ain't already gonna spoken from eternity. Wait a minute now. Let me let me let me deal with devil just a little bit more. Amen. Uh, uh, Bishop, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but not in front of the people. Wait till you get me outside. <laughs> you, as a kingdom citizen, you, as a child of God, you, as a baptized, born again believer, amen, you have already been. Oh, Shama, watch this now. Watch it, watch it, watch it, Bishop. Watch this, watch this. Amen. If we were in God before time, were we not? We were chosen in Him. Come on, somebody. We were in Him before the foundation of the world. We were in Him. If we were in Him, and he is eternity's past, then so are we. If you're just getting saved, don't worry about that right now. But we have always been in, listen, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts that I have toward you. They are thoughts of good and not evil to bring you to an expected end. And then in Isaiah 46 and 9, it talks about I 
am to your end, coming back to your beginning. Come on. Come on. You preach it, Doc. I've already walked this thing out with you. You just don't remember. And when we got the Holy Ghost, he said he would bring all things to our remembrance. He wasn't talking about the beans you left on the stove. He wasn't talking about the iron you left on. He wasn't talking about none of that. Somebody you forgot to curse out or whatever. No, he wasn't talking about the conversations that you had with him. Yes, sir. Am I doing all right, son? <laughs> Lord have mercy. God's word. You are God's word. Yes, Uh-oh, watch this now. Paul put it like this. I'm paraphrasing now. Y'all know the one? Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> when people don't read that, Hold that up. When people don't read that, you are living in pistols. Yes, sir. You are God's word. Yes, sir. If they want to know what God is like, come on, somebody. They should be able to look at you, your lifestyle, the way you live, your holy living, your sanctity. They should see Jesus. What did, what did the disciple tell Jesus? You've been talking about this God all this time. Amen. And it's about time that we look at him for ourselves. Show me, to Show me him. Yes, Jesus said, have I not been so long with you that you don't know me? This is God. This is how God looks. Huh? Come on. The power and authority. This is God. In the flesh. And that's what we as people of God are supposed to be. God in the flesh. We're supposed to be demonstrating what the kingdom of God is all about. In the flesh. Saying what he said. We listen. Jesus did not represent God. Lord Jesus. When you represent something, you ain't that. It's just a representation. But in John it said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and everything was made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him, amen, was the light of men. In other words, the illumination, I made God visible. I brought God to light. Yeah. This is what God is. Yeah. Lord. Lord, thank you, Father. Let the word do the work. Yes. Preachers, y'all getting your license? That piece of paper ain't gonna mean nothing to you. Amen. If you don't say what God said. Amen. You can say it out of your own opinion. You can talk about it from your own mind, your own uh, thinking and your own thoughts. Amen. But unless you say what God say, take that piece of paper and light your cigar with it. <laughs> say what God say. Don't compromise. I heard Bishop Raymond preaching last time he was preaching here. He said you cannot compromise. You can't take down. Yes, I don't care what nobody is talking about and what nobody is saying. Yes, you can't take on. If you don't, let me tell you something. If you don't know something, don't act That's like you know. If you don't know a thing, don't act like you know a thing. Don't try to be so deep until you drown in it yourself. Yes, sir. I'm just about there. 
Yeah. When the devil tempted Jesus, watch this. I, if I hadn't been around you so long, I wouldn't be saying, watch this. <laughs> But watch this, when, when the devil tempted Jesus, the devil began to quote scripture. But it didn't have it in here. He didn't have it in here. And the first thing Jesus wanted him to know was, I can turn these stones to bread. Because I'm hungry. That's why it's a temptation to me. Because you can't be no temptation if you ain't got it on the inside already. You cannot be tempted unless you're drawn away and enticed, amen, of your own stuff that's inside. What the devil do is prick on that. He pulls on that thing on the inside of you that you desire and make it a temptation. That's right. When the devil tempted Jesus, he replied, it is written. It's what God said. Lord Jesus. Yes, I'm hungry, but it's what God said. Yeah. It's written in the word that man shall not live by, I ain't got to eat no bread. I ain't got to eat Marita. I don't have to eat sunbeam. I don't have to eat Mrs. Bees. I don't have to eat this kind of bread. Yes, sir. But the word of God has become my sustenance. What God said is my food. Amen. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus could have, if he had chosen to, he could have turned the stone, the stone into bread and looked the devil in the face and said, what you going to do about that? But because the devil suggested it, huh? because the devil suggested it, he had to make it plain. It's not what you say, but it's what God said. He told the disciples, I got, look, they said, look, why come your, your master, your teacher don't eat like I, we all eat and everything? He said, listen, I have food. That you don't know nothing about. And my food is to do his will. That's what I eat off of. And that's what we as saints of God, we ought to fill up on the word of God. I'm coming in now. This is my 14th closing. <laughs> If I could just make it to 16 without you throwing me out of here, I'll be all right. Jesus was saying, it doesn't matter that I'm hungry. It doesn't matter that I can turn these stones to bread. But that is not what matters. What matters is what God said. The wonderful thing about what God said and had written in his word is that it still matters. No matter how long ago it's been, it still matters and it still does the same thing. Jesus said it is written what God said. We need to fill our hearts and minds with the word of God. Think and meditate on them day and night. Speak them continually on a daily. Amen. So you get it in your heart. Till you get it filled up in there, woman of God. You yes. got to keep saying it. Keep saying it. Yes, when you speak it, it goes in. Amen. And then it comes out and does what it's supposed to do. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I heard, Brother Jeff, I saw you online. I heard you ministering uh, yesterday. Amen. And you were talking about uh, sometimes things get out of our way. We don't have the time to spend the time in the word of God like we should. Amen. Things coming our way. We got work. We got job. We got school. We got this. And the things of life. They keep us from getting in the word like we should. Yeah, right. But let me tell you what's got to happen. Amen. In this last hour. We got to make time. We got to make time for the word of God. Amen. If we don't make time for the word of God, the enemy will make time to whisper in your ear. Lord have mercy. Lord, I 
You can't speak what's not on your mind unless you're a crazy person. <laughs> if you ain't got nothing in your head and you talking, uh, I think the train just skipped the track or something. So when you open your mouth and speak, it's already in your mind first. And then it goes down into your heart. And it builds. Amen. Because some of the stuff we're thinking about, we don't ever do anything about it. When we think evil, when we think wrong, when we think uh, bad and wicked, amen, it builds in here. Because we don't do anything about it. It becomes a challenge to us. Yes. Yes. Amen. And we don't do anything about it. You're saying to yourself, if I leave it alone, it'll be all right. I ain't gonna bother. But after a while, you're gonna get in a compromise, a compromised position. Uh -huh. And it's gonna come up. Because yes, you ain't gonna have nothing else to say but what's in there. Yes, you can't speak what's not in your mind unless you're a little loony. <laughs> but if you speak what's in your mind, that's what's in your heart. For the scripture declares that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. That is why it's important to preachers, ministers. Amen. Don't go by what nobody else tell you. You find this stuff. If your pastor preach to you and minister to you and teach you, go back home and search it out for yourself. He's not going to tell you anything wrong But when times come You can't tell the devil my pastor said Amen. When you get tempted You can't say Bishop Ravish told me You going to have to know this for yourself Search the scriptures And find out whether or not You have eternal life in there Personally Hallelujah Search them for yourself. I hear what you said, Pastor Dwayne. But if you don't mind, can I go home and study this myself? And if what you told them is correct, the Spirit will confirm. That's what I want my people to do. Whatever I say, you ain't got to believe me. You ain't got to believe me. Go search it out for yourself. When I start talking about this crazy stuff that we were born, amen, in God before time came, yes, sir. you go search it out. Paul will show it to you in the eight chapters of, of Romans. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. amen. He'll show you that before the foundation of the world, we were called. We were called. And if we were called, we were justified. Huh? If we were justified, then we were glorified. We were raised up to a higher standard than just ordinary living. Search that stuff out. Amen. Fill your heart with what? With the word of God. Why the word? Let's qualify the word because I know you don't believe me. Let's qualify the word and then I'm going to call it a day. In St. John, amen, the first chapter that we was reading, but in the beginning, we're going to qualify the word. This is why the word is able to do above, exceedingly abundantly, above all that we could ask or think in your life. That's why the word in you is started a good work and it's not going to stop until it finished. Yes, we can ready to qualify the word. In the beginning of all times and created existence, for the word gave it its being. All things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was worried. That's the word. From all eternity, it has and will stand the test of time. Amen. From all eternity. See, God spoke in the determinate counsel to the spirit and to the word. In the determinate counsel, they determined what would be. And whatever God and the Spirit and the Word decided would be, it is. You were in there in the meeting. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You was in the meeting. We were. Amen. You, your mama might not have been here. Your granddaddy might not have been here. And Adam might not have been here. But you were in the meeting. Yes, he called your name, Stanley. You've got to absorb this. Yes, sir. And everything you're going through right now, I don't care how good or how bad it is, yes, sir. God already fixed that thing. Yes, yes, he already fixed that. Yes, sir. And the only way that you can't make it is you back up. Oh. And if you put your hands to the gospel plot and turn and look back, you ain't fit for the kingdom of God. You, you, you'll be like Saul. You'll become rejected. But you got to keep going forward. And depending on that word in the beginning, that word, the same word I'm talking about was there. Amen. Before time. The word is to God what man's word is to himself. Let me pull that up. Lord Jesus. When you sit down, if you ever sat down and talked to Bishop Raven, I'm using him today, he will tell you what sort of man he is without telling you. Yes, sir. The words that come out of his mouth yes, sir. will tell you what sort of man he is. First Lady Raven, if you talk to her, she'll, she'll tell you what sort of lady she is yes, sir. without telling you what sort of lady she is. Her words his words that come out of his mouth that matches the lifestyle. Amen. Amen. And that's what God's word is to us. Yes, sir. It'll tell us what sort of God he is. Yes, sir. The word is to God what man's word is to himself. The manifestation or the expression of himself, his thoughts and his character to those without him or outside of him. He expresses himself or make himself known through his word. That's why in John it said he, he became the light of men, the illumination of men. He made himself known through the brightness of his word and his character. What God says matter. It became matter. Now whatever is matter, it matters. It 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 becomes substance. The word is not just a word. The word manifests substance or matter. And if it manifests matter, it matters. Because God's word is matter. It matters. Amen. The Bible says the word that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. And that's why we should speak what he speaks, say what he says. Because when you open your mouth, his word coming out and it creates life. The word never stopped working from the determining council's decision. What they decided is still working. Huh? Come on, coming. The Holy Spirit is still managing and governing what that same word that was spoken in the beginning spoke. The Holy Ghost is he's the manager. He's managing it. He's making it come to pass what the word said by his power. We were in him, the word, when he said, you are healed by the stripes. You are above and not beneath. You are the blessed of God and not cursed. We are the righteousness of God. We are free because the Son has made us free. And whom the Son says free is indeed free. All my needs are already met according to him, to the word. How can you say that? Because he's our shepherd. Yes, 
Huh? And David said, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not lack. I shall not want, I shall not lack. There is nothing that I need, nothing that I'm supposed to have, that the word of God cannot bring it to me. Hallelujah. Say what God said. Because what God says, it matters. Amen. Preachers, nice and easy. When you open your mouth to speak to anyone behind the pulpit, make a pulpit, in the street, on your job, don't open your mouth and say nothing if you can't say what God said. Because it's the only thing that's going to matter to that person that you're witnessing to, that person that you're talking to. Let them see your humanity and compassion. But tell him, this is what God said he will do for you. He will save you. He will raise you. He'll heal you. Come on, he'll build you up. He'll make you somebody. Amen. With love. In love. To God be the glory. Thank God for you. Amen. Give God another hand clap of praise for that word. transition into the act of licensing. Praise God. We're going to move right into it. If I could get, if I can get that stuff moving. He got it. He got it. It's your day. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Okay, I'm going to give you the minister's training report. Now, before I do, I want to say thank you to Pastor Moore for trusting me with those with those two ministers. Praise God! Thank you for trusting me. It means a lot. It means a lot. It means a lot. It takes a strong leader to allow someone else. You know, put their hands on your people. That tells me you trusted me enough that I wouldn't tell them anything wrong. And if I did, they would come back and tell you anyway. <laughs> and but thank you so much. You. All right. We have a symbol today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, to officially license Brother Kendrick Knight, Sister Joanna Knight, Sister Luana Ferguson, Brother Octavius Johnson, Brother Jeffrey Moore and Sister Brenda Maddox as members of Chosen Ministries Christian Center and United Faith Christian Center. During the past two plus years, these candidates have been serving and working in various aspects of the ministry, serving in harmony with leadership to accomplish the vision of the ministry. In addition, after serving faithfully for two years and completing the minister's training course, Pastor Shah met with these brothers and sisters on June 11th, 2022 to examine their suitability, suitability and readiness for licensing to serve as ministers in the ministry. Pastor Shah examined these brothers and sisters with the written exam 
And by hearing their statements regarding their conversion and call to serve, Christian experience, biblical doctrine, their understanding of the ministry to which they've been called, and their understanding of the purpose of the church. After deliberate and thorough examination, Pastor Shah approved the licensing of these brothers and sisters as ministers in the ministry. And today, with the approval of Chosen Ministries Christian Center and United Faith Christian Center, we come to officially recognize and license them who have proved that under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, they are ready to be licensed to serve as ministers in this ministry. Amen. Praise God. So when I, when I call your name, please come forward. Brother Kendrick Knight. Y'all can applaud. <laughs> Sister Joanna Knight. Sister Lawana Ferguson. Brother Octavius Johnson. My man. Brother Jeffrey Moore. Praise God, praise God, praise God. <laughs> Sister Brenda Maddie. Yeah! 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 That's all right. It's, it's good to be excited. Good to be excited. Before we go into this, let me tell you that these, it has been an honor and a privilege to teach and work with you guys these last two plus years. Amen. I can remember the beginning when we first started and up until now you guys have grown and matured tremendously. Tremendously. There were times when I was like, man, they're going to have to come up with something, praise God. But you guys began to buckle down and you, you exceeded my expectations. You exceeded my expectations. As I tell if I tell uh, those in my classes, it's not my job to call you. It's my job to verify and validate the call that God has already placed in you. Yeah. So I know that I have a name for being a hard teacher and I have a name for doing the most when it comes to the things of the Lord. But if I, I just believe in it that much that if you want it, you will stick around and you will do what is necessary to have it. I do believe you guys have done like that. You have exceeded my expectations. You have gone in and you, you dug in and you got the job done. And it was my pleasure to see that all of you passed, first of all, passed the written exam. It was, it was a joy. I know it was a relief to you, but it was a joy to me that you put that much time in. And it was not an easy exam. If, you, if anybody wants to see, I'll let them show it to you. There was, it was an exam. They actually had, it wasn't an A, A, B, C, D, true or false. They actually had to write out and know the answers to the questions on top of what it is we had been studying all this time. So I believe, I know within my heart of hearts that they are ready for this level of ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Now there's a difference between licensing and ordination. Licensing is just a permission, it's just to further, in my estimation, further your training and get you ready for said ordination. Right. When we ordain you possibly to a position or ordain you uh, uh, to some different uh, leadership role in the ministry. To be licensed is just the capability and the permission to preach and to counsel. Mm -hmm. Praise God. But when it's time for ordination, you will already be furnished with the knowledge of how to do weddings, funerals, baptisms, ordinances, all of these different things. I consider ordination a, a additional step. As I told you in the beginning, that ministers have steps to take, a process to go through, uh, possibly leading you to eldership or pastor. Praise God. So we are, we are taking the steps in the process and in progress to getting there. But today, we stand to officially license you for ministry. Amen. Brother Kendrick Knight, Sister Joanna Knight, Sister Luana Ferguson, Brother Octavius Johnson, Brother Jeffrey Moore, and Sister Brenda Maddox. In the presence of God and this body, I charge you to hold fast to God and the faith. Devote yourself to prayer and Bible study daily. 
Strive every day to be more like Christ in your thoughts, words, and actions because it's only through the strength that you gain in the presence of God that you will be able to face the challenges that are ahead of you. Keep your heart and your mind and soul focused on Jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Resolving that absolutely nothing will keep you from finishing the race that God has set for you today. Preach the word. I charge you therefore to preach the word. Be ready in and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and sound doctrine. Study to show yourselves approved unto God a workman that need not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. Amen. Be ready to serve. Be ready to advance the kingdom of God by serving faithfully in whatever area of ministry you are called. Undergird the pastoral leadership in the ministry consistently displaying the spirit of servanthood, understanding that ministers are to serve, not to be served. Walk in the power of Christ, knowing that you can do all things through Christ, who is your strength. Considerations for subsequent ordinations will hinge on your ability and availability to serve on this level. Yes, Promote unity. Lead the way by in preserving unity and harmony. Do not be double-tongued. Do not say one thing to one person and something else to another. Be consistent in every answer that you give. Never participate in gossip, tale-bearing, or idle-talking, or slander. When conflict does arise, see it, see it as an opportunity to glorify God, to serve other people, and to grow to be like Christ by following the example set forth in the 18th chapter of Matthew. Sure. Brother Kendrick Knight, Sister Joanna Knight, Sister Luana Ferguson, Brother Octavius Johnson, Brother Jeffrey Moore, Sister Brenda Maddox, do you pledge your faithful service to God by serving his people in the capacity for which you are being licensed. Amen. Amen. Spouses, please come forward as your name is called. Mr. Ferguson. Mrs. Johnson. <coughs> Pastor Moore. <laughs> Deacon Matt. Your spouses have been called to serve as ministers in this ministry in United Faith Christian Center. In this capacity, much will be required of them. Therefore, you should pray for them daily and allow God to direct you as you strive to support them in this work. As the spouse of a minister, you must always exercise self-control. Your speech should be seasoned with wisdom and you must be faithful in everything you do. Spouses, you may return to your seat. Thank you so much. <clears throat> chosen ministries and united faith Christian centers you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people of the flock of God that has been called to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world as such you have approved the licensing of Brother Knight, Sister Knight, Sister Ferguson, Brother Johnson, Brother Moore, and Sister Maddox to serve as ministers of Chosen Ministries Christian Center and United Faith Christian Center. Do you solemnly pledge to support them by praying for them, their families, and their ministries? If so, signify your pledge of support by standing. Bless God. Bless God. 
So if you have your programs or beside someone, say this with me in unison. Brother Knight, say it say with me. Brother Knight, sister with me. Sister Knight, Sister Ferguson, Brother Johnson, Brother Moore, Sister Maddox, we pledge to pray for you, your family, and your ministry. We pledge our steadfast cooperation so that we may walk together to accomplish the work of this ministry. We as the members of Chosen Ministries and United Faith Christian Centers do now solemnly set you apart for the work of the ministry. Praise God. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Thank you so much. I would ask at this time all ordained clergy, pastors, please come and help me to pray for these ministers. such a time as this. You are a chosen generation. You are God's beloved. God saw enough of you to call you to this level of ministry. It's not so much a comforting call, but it is a call like no other. So all of these ordained ministers and deacons are surrounding you today to cover you in prayer. To cover you in ministry, that you don't fall, that you don't falter, that you be all that God has called for you to be. They're touching in, a, in unison and in agreement. The reason for the laying of hands is for not just to transfer, but to show you that these ministers have your back. Oh God. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we stand before you humble today, God, as you have allowed us the satiety and the grace to license more soldiers in the army of the Lord. So right now, Father God, we ask that you continue to fill them with your precious Holy Spirit. Give them revelation for such a time as this, God. Guard and hold them in their personal lives as they endeavor to minister to your people, God. Let your perfect, honest, and holy will be done from the crown of their heads to the sole of their very feet. <clears throat> Lord, we cover them this afternoon. We stand with our hands on their shoulders and our hands locked together to show unity and covering for them, God. Transfer all of your goodness, all of your anointing, all of your revelatory power, even now, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, give them a hunger and a thirst for your word now like never before. Oh, God, in the most Oh, anoint them fresh even now, God. They put their hands to the plow, God, and they said, send me, I'll go. Oh, God. So we ask for you to give them an adequate portion of strength even now, God. Oh, before they even leave this altar, strengthen them, gird them up even now. Lord, fill them with your Holy Spirit, God. In the name of Jesus, let their character match their ministry, God. Lord, we're expecting miracle signs and wonders from this crop of ministers, God. We lay our hands on them, God, to show that we have their backs, God. That all that you've done in our lives, we expect you to do the same in their lives, God. You've given us longevity in the ministry, God. So give them longevity as they continue to press toward the mark of the prize of the high call which is in Christ Jesus. Oh God, we thank you. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, fill them with power right now. God. Even down at this altar, fill them with power. He called them with shelter. Fill them with power, God. Fill them with power, God. Oh, right in their bellies, God. 
out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Oh, we thank you. Hallelujah. They say, we give you glory, God. We give you honor and all of the praise, oh God. Because you alone are worthy. We thank you, Lord. And they are licensed in the physical. Or not them in the spiritual God. That from this day forward, they will never be the same. We give you glory, honor, and praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. I tell you, He
Pray to Lord. On behalf of Chosen Ministries Christian Center, and we just like to say that we are super proud of you guys. You guys have, like uh, Senior Pastor said, you guys have come a long way. You never, you didn't let fear stop you from doing what God has called you to do. There have been times that I know you wanted to give up, but you know your calling. You know that that's what God called you to do. And so because of that, I know that there is so much work in the vineyard and God is going to use you mightily. Mightily. You guys have different calling. There's a need out there because God going to give it to you if it isn't a need out beyond these walls. So I'm just super proud of you guys. I love you guys. We're here for you. We're praying for you. And we're just going to keep pushing you out. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. First, I'd like to give honor to God, who the head of my life. I love him so much. To my pastor, Pastor Shai, who have poured so much into all of us at United Faith Christian Center, I just have to say thank you. Thank you. Thank God for... Apostle Shine for such awesome word on today. I thank God for you. Thank God for Apostle Baby, First Lady Sherry. Thank God for Pastor Board. I thank God for all of you. But I stood because I'm excited. Like these are the first, the first deacon. Thank you, Pastor Shine. The first evangelist. Powerful anointed prophetess, evangelist, Mannix. And I don't want to get mushy. I'm ahead of getting mushy. Well, you know our story. A lot of you know our story. You know, my husband's very outspoken. No, oh, mm -mm. God ain't called me. God ain't called me. So I, I don't believe in a woman pastor. So I ain't saying that. I say, because I asked, baby, can, I mean, God is calling me to pastor, um, but I got to get your permission. All right. He said yes. We spelled out. And the ministry started getting bigger and bigger and bigger until I make and he said, Whoa, hold on, hold on. <laughs> but I watched him. Did I cry? Yes. Did I get mad? Yes. But it was a drive on the inside of me from the Holy Spirit to told me to keep pushing, keep praying, keep interceding, keep fasting. And then one day, he, I heard him in the room with the music going in. He stole my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> and he was staying three o'clock in the morning, praying. And I'm like, hold on. <laughs> Just seeing God move on this young man. More than anything, I am so, so, super excited about Pastor Jeffrey Moore. <laughs> and I say that, I don't say that, I don't take that lightly, because we won. Yes. Yeah. We, we're not separated. Yeah. You know, I did tell the, the crowd, but they didn't understand what I was saying. But I told them, I'm inside of him. 
we won. So when you see him, you see me. Vice versa. So I thank God that he's my covering. I might have the office of the of a pastor, but he's my covering. He is my pastor. He got my back. And I know, like my auntie said, I know he would die for me. Won't you, babe? You know, she used to go to sleep early at night, but now she stay up because she don't know tell them what time I'll call her. But I want I wanted to give her this. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Pastor Shai, for all of you guys. I love you all. I love you all. I love you all. But I mean, I didn't give you a watch, but uh, I love you. <laughs> I love y'all. I'm proud of y'all. I'm so proud of each and every one of you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Amen. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Look, two of mine started looking in their bag. Do not look. For, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Do not look for a wife. Praise <laughs> God. It came from the heart. That's all that matters. Good Lord. <laughs> Alright, this is my favorite part. I need a little room. Yeah. Minister's license. Chosen, Man Chosen Ministries Christian Center certifies that Kendrick Knight vows to uphold the word of God and to work for spiritual welfare, welfare of all people and the unity of all Christian believers is hereby awarded this minister's license certificate on June the 26, 2022 by Dwayne Shot Sr. Yeah.
Minister of Life and Chosen Ministries Christian Center certifies that Joanna Knight vows to uphold the word of God and to work for spiritual welfare of all people and the unity of all Christian believers and is hereby awarded this Minister's License Certificate, June 26, 2020. Center certifies that Luana Ferguson vows to uphold the word of God and the work for spiritual welfare of all people in the unity of all Christian believers and is hereby awarded this minister's license certificate June 26, 2022. <laughs> Center, this certifies that Octavius Johnson vows to uphold the word of God and, the, and to work for spiritual welfare of all people and unity of all Christian believers and is hereby awarded this minister's license certificate June 26, 2022. <laughs> Center. This certified that Jeff Moore vows to uphold the word of God and to work for the spiritual welfare of all people and the unity of all Christian believers and is hereby awarded this minister's license certificate June 26, 2022. <laughs> Christian believers and is hereby awarded this minister's license certificate June 26, 2022. Yeah! seconds before we transition on. Praise God. Thank you. 
Praise God. All right. All right. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Very good. Brothers and sisters, family and friends, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our newly licensed ministers. Give them a hand. Yeah. Refreshments in Chosen Cafe, room 28. Now we have <laughs> cakes and drinks. Please go over there. They've been preparing uh, all service for you. And um, as right after the service is over, if you go out and walk down to Suite 28, that is where the, the refreshments will be. If they're light to go freshness. They're, they're, there's nothing that's going to fill you up, but it's something to keep you going until you can get to another, your other destination. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. That's why I got to make that known, this top I don't think they're going over there to get KFC or anything. They like to go refreshing. <laughs> but I, I want to take a brief moment. I want to allow our clergy, if they have anything to say, I want to allow Bishop Raven, if he had a few words. Not much. Um, uh, you know, not much to to you. Uh, just want to honor you, uh, Pastor yeah. Shy. Yeah. 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 I want to honor you and recognize you for continuing to do uh, ministry in such an excellent way. God bless you and uh, continue to stay on the wall. In doing what you're doing. Uh, this is a, 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 a new beginning that will continue for the days to come. For truly, a lot of people will uh, not just come to hear you preach, but a lot of people will come to follow you and, and to uh, continue to watch you and then learn to do what you're doing. You're doing a great job. Uh, 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 Pastor Moore, um, I'm humbled at your humility. Uh, that you would allow your leaders mm -hmm. to sit under the leadership of another leader. Mm -hmm. And so that would let me know that you are humble and and um, I appreciate where your heart is. And God bless you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and then, and then, and then uh, preachers that got common sense know how not to try to preach behind preachers <laughs> <laughs> who have preached. <laughs> <laughs> And truly, that was a word. I was taking some notes, and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to fix them into my next sermon. Or you, or you could just give me my notes. <laughs> Get my notes before you. God bless you, man. It was a great word. Amen. It was an on fire word. It was on the right, it's a right time word. And a lot of times, uh, you know, people are uh, 
just talking at the side of their mouth and not saying what nor what they're saying, but truly the word of God matters. And you have spoke a great word and and you spoke into my heart. And if you don't believe me, I do. I did. I take some notes. And so I'm gonna to have to put some of that stuff he was saying on our electric sign. Okay. Yeah, so you might ride by and see some of your preaching nice. on our electric sign. Great stuff, amen. Amen. And I don't mean no harm, man, but I, I really don't mean no harm, and I hope that nobody gonna beat me up on the way out. But your mother is beautiful. She's, 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 <laughs> If, if I ain't know, if I ain't know this, but I say, boy, your mama's fine. God bless you. I love you, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Praise God. So, so I have to reiterate a point I made earlier. She's my mama. And my mama. I love my baby. Praise God. Would you like to have some words, Apostle? Would you guys, any of you like to have any words? Like to have any? Yes, sir. I have to. Yeah, I have to. I have to. Speak to Brother Jeff and Pastor Moore. Uh, I apologize if I offended you guys in any way. It wasn't my intentions. It was not my intention to offend you. It wasn't my intention to leave you out or, or mishandle you in any kind of way. So I just want to say I'm sorry. I apologize for anything that I've done that made you feel uneasy or whatever. Amen. God bless all you likes and ease. I, I give honor to the Spirit of Christ and to my apostle, to Pastor Shai, to Pastor Bishop Ravy, and to every precious soul in the building, to all of the pastors. I just stood to say, I am so incredible proud of my babies, of my children. Brenda and Judy was kind of born right there together, just a few weeks apart. And uh, they had this ongoing joke because Brenda act like me and Judy act like my sister. They went home with the Lord. And they really think that we switched babies somewhere along the way. And I have not told them no different. So they'll go to their grave wondering, did it happen? <laughs> but I thank God so much for y'all. I seen you when you were so deep in your mess, Pastor Moore. That I didn't think you would ever come back. You were so deep in hurt and so deep in stuff. Tell her, I knew it took God to bring you out. Amen. And when you turned your heart to me, the first time you said mama, and it was real, I never forget it as long as I live. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you, Pastor. Pastor Jeffrey Moore. I seen the greatness in you. I picked her for him. I told her that's going to be your husband. <laughs> she said, no, he's not. I said, yes, he is too. <laughs> that's your husband. And God blessed it. He blessed the marriage. And I'm so proud of you. And Brenda, I want to say to you today, darling, I stand in your mom's stead. She was the, one of the awesomest women in the world. As she spoke it, as she prophesied to you, you could take it to the bank because it was going to surely happen. 
And she spoke over your life. And I stand today in her place to tell you that I love you so much. And I am so incredibly proud of you. You come from a long ways. You've been through a whole lot of stuff. I thank you, Walt, for taking care of my baby. Thank you, Jeff, for taking care of my baby. I appreciate it so much. And I, I thank God for my apostle. If I could find me a man that would treat me like he treat women, I would say I'll see y'all later. I'm gone. <laughs> Y'all wouldn't see me no more in a month or two. Oh, no. But I would be gone. I love y'all. And I'm proud of every one of y'all for the stand that you too. I love you. And I'm, I'm just silly and I'm just being you. You have to come out. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Real quick. Thank you, Bishop Lady. Lady Raven. <laughs> Bishop, I love you immensely. We, we, we. 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 Oh, I said on behalf of. <laughs> we love you. We love you all immensely. And uh, for my brothers and my sisters, I, I, I know what I know what you've been through. You know, um, there is some work. And uh, you guys, you know, you persevered, you came through. And it's like my pop said, you know, whatever comes out of your mouth, think about it, think about it before you say it. And just a little add on to it, because somebody's listening to it. Amen. So make sure it's correct and not talking inside of your head like you already heard. And just and speak what God says instead of what you say. Amen. 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 Okay. Anyone else want to offer an opportunity before we close? Yes, sir. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you all for being in the house. Thank you all for the privilege of coming here to be 
This is a great occasion. Amen. I'm so proud of all of you. Amen. Because uh, carrying the word of God is, is so precious. Amen. So um, continue to persevere. Yeah. Amen. I know that you got that certificate, but allow God to use you in these last and evil days because there's people hurting, people dying, and let God use you. And he'll get all the glory and all the honor. Just thank God for Bishop Bishop Raby, yeah. um, Apostle Shy, who preached the um, outstanding word on today. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If there's nothing else to hold our attention, we will call the man of the hour back up to close us in his own way. <laughs> Close us out. Okay. <laughs> Call us sleeping. <laughs> Praise God. Stand to your feet. We're going to close out in song if that's all right. We like to close. We like to sing out, bless the Lord. I like to say a short prayer and then amen. That all right? Y'all sing this with me, then well, I promise I'll let you go. I will. of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior, to him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Can we sing amen?